here. Great, thank you very much. So, hello everyone. Uh, like in this tutorial today, we're going to discuss prompt engineering. Um, okay, so can uh, one of you define what is a prompt? Your understanding. Uh, like what is a prompt and what is prompt engineering? Like um, what is your, your understanding on the subject? Uh, Rahman, go ahead. Uh, okay, I will say it's kind of command you you give to the model, so you can get a response from it. Okay, so this is a prompt, and um, yes, which is more or less correct. Uh, so, um, okay, so w what about prompt engineering? Do you have like a, an idea of what that is? Uh, I have idea, but I'm not sure if it's correct. Uh, prompt engineering is uh, to it's kind of uh, I would say programming or make the prompt in a specific structure. For example, uh, and get answer questions and answer uh, something like that. Uh, okay, so uh, anyone else who want to venture some uh, some answer? Thank you, Abdurrahman. Um, out. Okay, uh, Hilary, go ahead. Um. Hilary, are you here? Can you? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, prompt engineering is the, the the process of refining and optimizing the the input you give to AI to have a to get a desired output. Okay. Yes. Good. Yes. That's uh, basically it. Yes um do you have like a some like um example of like what you can do what <laughs> what it entails i know i'm i'm adding more question because you know the answer like i'm adding more question basically so uh, uh okay so I'll, like you can if you are if you're going to ask ai to do something maybe you you ought to be like uh putting the key keywords uh specific keywords and uh, um maybe have more uh, description for what you want uh, okay something yes okay that's that's good yes that, that are definitely some of the like uh, the tactics or like the things that you can do to improve the output um sheila do you want to to say something oh Giuseppe, go ahead uh, um, sorry, uh, I wanted to answer the question on what prompt engineering is. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Say that. Say your My answer is almost the same as Hilary's. It's uh, prompt engineering for me is the process of designing these instructions that we are calling prompts that we feed to the model to be able to get um, outputs from them. Okay, yeah, that's that's correct. Yes good uh and did you have anything to else to add like um for some kind of a strategy something you would have tried yourself or like you know that you can try um i haven't tried anything but if i were to try it would be giving it instructions to understand um a natural language like normal human being language so basically that would be a prompt and that would be part of prompt engineering for me uh okay um yeah giving it in, in instructions is definitely like something like uh it can help um the instructions won't, won't be exactly about like natural language because this like, we are talking about what we're talking about here are generative models that are llms are large natural large natural um 
large language models, those have already have a natural language understanding. So if you are giving them instruction, this is not going to be something additional to that, something more specified uh, to the task at hand, or maybe more specified to like um, a special use of, of language is not going to be like um, just natural language. Okay, just, just to clarify what Sheila said or um, Okay, but it's a good answer. Giuseppe, go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah, just to add on to what Sheila and the rest have said, um, uh, from experience, um, I've realized that once when you're designing the instructions, you should, and you should uh, put the instructions in a simple way such that the, the LLM can understand. Um, also, when you're designing the prompts, you should focus on the five, five Ws. Um, which I think is uh, uh, why, what, when, who, and where. Um, so you should um, design the prompt in such a way that the machine learning model, or such as the open AI, let me just give an example, uh, like assume that you're a data scientist and uh, I need you to extract this data from this uh, database or this source. Uh, so you should be very specific uh, when prompting and you should also design it in such an environment whereby the LLM thinks that it's actually uh, in that role or performing that role of that specific professional that you're trying to get. Yeah, yeah. And for G GPT-4, GPT uh, I've come to understand that GPT-4, you can be able to um, design prompts in, in paragraph uh, mode in, in a paragraph form and it will be able to break down the paragraph into steps however gpt3 struggles with uh long long uh yeah paragraphs or long sentences okay uh yeah so um uh that's what the first part about like uh, uh, telling the like in the prompt uh, telling the model to assume a persona of some sort that is um yeah so that's one of the strategies yes uh, you can you can you can try um uh, like uh, clarifying the 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 instructions uh, or like what uh, what what you what you need giving more details is also like another um uh good strategy so it's a very good answer thank you uh so as i can see like uh, because um how to say because everyone uh, like talking about generative models, talking about um, LLMs now, no one, almost no one is a, like a complete um, novice because everyone have tried at least uh, one of these uh, chat, uh, uh, like chat GBT or, or like any of the other models that are available. And what you, when you are typing a question for chat GBT, or um, Gemini or whatever, whatever other models, uh, what you are writing is a prompt, and um, and uh, basically, uh, like if you are playing around with ChatGPT, trying to get a particular answer from it, you might rewrite your prompt several times, trying to get a better answer to like or a specific answer. And what you're doing basically is prompt engineering, but. Uh, for it to be like actual engineering, it should be like more uh, systematic, I would say, not just playing around. And it should be have like some kind of um, um, like uh, some kind of a metric or evaluation in the end. So what we are going to discuss uh, today, uh, and let me start. We have a very short um, 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 presentation, but it's like really. Um, Okay, so I will try then a uh, small presentation, then we'll try to have like a, maybe it's a little demo, but um, so just, um, okay, as we said, like, is there a talk about like gener gener generative AI, what is generative AI, like, uh, you know, what is this? So it's like really, um, uh, this is just the definitions of like, uh, what is generative AI, what is like a lang language models, uh, and I'm going to assume that you already know about this, but like if um, just to reiterate or just to like uh, clarify, so these large language models are um, uh, like really uh, are deep learning models 
uh, in the end are basically made uh, like they are de depend on uh, the transformer um, uh, algorithm uh, which uh, and then they, they are like uh, basically trained to have um, natural language understanding so they are supposed to perform different natural language processing um, uh, processes um, starting from like um, uh, so generating, gener yeah, so it's all generative, basically. So are we talking about generative AI? Generating text or generating um, um, language, like uh, natural or code, or or um, so can produce different things. Of course, the generative AI can also include like uh, models that generate um, not language, but like uh, pictures or videos. Uh, and the models themselves, the algorithms that they depend on are different. So for languages, these are transformer. For images, these are diffusion models. Uh, so just to talk about, um, uh, OK, uh, so this is to talk about, like, um, uh, this is what I already said. So yeah, so this is a history, like uh, when it started. And basically, it's like the 2017. It's very, very like or six years ago or seven years ago now. Uh, like attention is all you need. This is the, the paper that introduced the transformer architecture, and then from those uh, forward, like um, up to like uh, 2020, uh, uh, 2020, like fine tuning was the only way to basically to adopt a model to a particular specific task so this is all before prompt engineering it's starting from chat GBT that like this they like, came into like the foreground and because like it became possible to get really a uh, good uh, specialized answer from just um playing around with the prompt uh, instead of actually fine-tuning the whole large model. So these large models are really trained on a huge amount of data, a huge amount of text. Um, and then uh, to before it was to make it specialized to answer your questions about, like, um, um, let's say, about things about, uh, uh, like, ma uh, like it's, it's any specialized questions, not just generate uh, just text you needed to actually fine tune it for your specific meaning that you have to like, for example, you wanted to answer questions about like some medicine for about medicine. So for example, you needed to like provide a lot of text about medicine and then fine tune the models to answer questions from that. But um, now it is, it is possible to just add your text, uh, a context to your question from like, you say, provide this article, please give me answer from the article and that's what it works basically so this is one thing that you can do like this is like where prompt engineering came into view um so uh okay so this is just like like what is prompt engineering in essence is like the designing of the it's a prompt um aiming to get like the the accurate or best output like uh the more accurate and the more like yeah, useful output from your model. Uh, so uh, getting into the strategies. So uh, the the focus here is strategies to getting better results. Strategy to for for like prompt engineering. Um, here basically I'm I'm basing this on um, uh, the, the, okay. So for a, uh, for a specific. So this applies basically for any kind of uh, gen generative language model, um, but um, we're going to be using, following the open AI, because you are using open AI, so we're going to be using, following the open AI prompt engineering guide. So actually I'm going to open this guide and show you, but just to mention in in short, what are the, like the strategy in general, like these are um, some of the strategies that can be followed. So writing clear instructions, this is something that already, um, like you mentioned, giving more details to your questions. The more detailed your prompt, uh, the better. So, but you have to, of course, you have to keep in mind that prompts have, um, like language models have a context window, meaning that 
your question and the answer you get out of the, the model have to have a, a specific length. This length like varies from model to model. Um, for example, that GBT, um, oh, so, sorry, GBT3 uh, Turbo uh, has a Windows, a context Windows of uh, 5,000, 4,000, sorry, 4,000 um, um, a token. And uh, while like a uh, GBT4 has a, a context window of like 100, uh, 128,000 tokens. And uh, when I'm talking about tokens, uh, okay, so, so tokens are, uh, this is something like uh, when you learn more about um, how language models work, uh, you learn that uh, like, when you enter a text in 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 these models the models of course don't handle text directly you have to transform it you have to embed it so the text is first broken into tokens uh tokens are, can be like words or part of words uh, so that like um okay just um uh let me actually show you this let's say um Open AI tokenizer just to show actually and try it out. Uh, so uh, um, okay, just so we can see like um, uh, it 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 breaks uh, the text into parts and uh, like you can enter anything here and. Um, like I'm just like uh, I think any random text and then you can see like it's broken down into parts so it's basically just words uh, but like um, let's try this tokenization not if it's wrong spelling but okay you can see, for example, that uh, the word tokenization is broken into two-part tokenization. Um, uh, so in this in this way, you end up but instead of because a language has uh, so so many different words, like uh, the number of wo different words that are like a huge number. But if you break down words into parts. Uh, you end up with like um, for any word that's come with like a uh, different um, uh, like they share a root the root is broken down like basically and the suffix is is different anyway um, so this is the first step in 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 uh, let's let's uh, let me not go into a lot of details here but um, so after tokenization, the step is next step is going to be embedding. This so changing the uh, the words or the tokens into um, vectors, uh, which is uh, just um, a, like a long array of um, numerical values. And this uh, embedding is like um, uh, takes into account like the meaning of the word basically is. Um, is embedded. We are going to talk about this a little bit more when we consider when we talk about um, vector uh, databases um, on Friday. But um, what I'm talking about here is that what the what we're talking about when we say like context window or the number of um, of uh, characters or number of like uh, uh, the context window, like then the how the size that um, a model accepts as a prompt and also counts as the output of it is count in tokens, not in words. So this is how they depending on how the model breaks down the words. But okay, you can also think about it in words just to be um, if it's confusing if you don't know what tokens are. Like uh, I probably didn't give like a uh, enough explanation. So we can read about this to understand it more. You need to read about it uh, and understand this more, actually. So uh, just going back to what we're talking about. So these are, um, so what I was talking about is the first strategy here, right, in clear instruction. This is just giving more details. Giving more details means just clarifying more what you want from it. It can also include 
providing a context for your answers. Uh, it can be also like, uh, as um, some of you already mentioned, uh, asking the, the model to, to take a particular persona when it answers the question, all of that, anything, any details that can be helpful um, also breaking down your your uh, the task into smaller subtasks that are also going to be clarifying the entrance instructions. Um, so sorry. So the next uh, step or the next strategy is provide an reference to a text. Uh, so yeah. So if you have if you want to get an answer from a particular source, not to just uh, you want your uh, your model to give you. Uh, answers from a particular um, source, not just generally. You don't want it to hallucinate to make up um, answers from its. Um, um, this is what hallucin hallucination means in this context. Um, when it makes up answers that are not like they have no, um, um, they are just completely made up. They they don't make any sense. Um, if you don't want it to hallucinate, you want it to answer to give you accurate answers from a particular source, you can provide that source. So it can be an article, can be any kind of text, you can provide it as part of your prompt. Um, um, okay, so um, uh, all right, so I already talked about like splitting tasks, so simpler subtask. We can provide a chain of thought, which is like um, uh, basically telling the model what is steps to take to get to the answer. So like um, like the model, sometimes if you don't, like if you ask a complex question, like say, think about a math question, for example, a math problem, if you ask it like, what is the answer of this complicated uh, math problem, it might just jump and give you some random answer. But if you tell it to follow a particular steps, like do this step and then do that step, it's going to give you like better um, accuracy. Uh, and then we can discuss like using external tools. Um, this might uh, include like it can be like uh, tools that are already available for example by by open ai for example they have this code um, um like co code execute executing uh, a tool that like, executes code so it will if you have add that to your prompt uh if you add that tool is going if you are now you are asking what code is going to be you're going to be getting like accurate codes valid code nothing that is like you like basically um or like you can ask it to actually um give you like the results of that of the uh, performing or the executing the code but another thing is that you can actually write your own functions and provide those as tools to to your um to your in within your prompts and then like uh, basically um uh the the uh, if so basically you're integrating like the the use of LLM model uh, providing it with extra um, functions you have wrote and the final thing is that, and this is important, is you can test the changes systematically. Like whatever strategy you do, whatever strategy you follow, you can test systematically so that so you can you can you like uh, it's not just you are trying. Like uh, maybe you can ch check by like looking at it trying it for a couple of examples and you can see like, yes, my strategy is getting me better, um, uh, like better answer for this particular example, but uh, you can test it more systematically to make sure that the strategy you're following is giving you actual better performance. And so to just look into this or into details, I'm going to actually look at the um, uh, open um, AI uh, from the engineering guide because they have they provide examples and you can actually try those out of, uh, ourselves um so just uh, yeah so this is uh, this is the one which is also open here okay so um so this is our like the six strategies they actually like um mentioned he here so um 
Um, so writing clear instruction, this is the first strategy. Uh, give me one moment. Uh, excuse me, just one moment. I uh, will be back. Hello, sorry, uh, sorry for this. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, I, I was going to be, we are going to be looking at the at the um, guide here at OpenAI, just to look at like some examples. So you can see like the, these are the, um, uh, the different things you can do for to provide clear instructions uh so just looking at that so one of them is that you can provide um like uh, just make it more clear so an example here like um uh asking like uh, these are just very simple uh so like um, um instead of asking like who is president you can ask like who was the president of mexico in 2021 and how frequently are elections held so yeah so this is just a vague question like what which president are you asking about and this is like a clearer question so uh asking the model to adopt a personal so just to to, to discuss a little bit about open ai um uh like um, models and the, the models interface let's talk uh, look about at Okay, so um, before discussing the rest of the strategies for um, for like prompt engineering, uh, let's just take uh, like I'm, I'm I hope that they, yeah they already started doing this, but um, like you know, when you are you want we want to like you or have like OpenAI API keys, and uh, you can basically use this. From Python, uh, but after installing OpenAI um, library, okay. So um, I also like um, to load the, my API key because I have to keep it secret. You don't want to push your API key to GitHub. Um, add your like um, uh, your API key to a uh, .env um, file. Like I have multiple APIs keys here, but like um, yeah, you can add them here and then um, I load uh, load it and so um, and this is like how you connect basically um, is is supplying the API key here. Um, okay, so just to look at the, um, how to to do this, so you have to use client chat uh, completion. Um, so the, how the input to the model takes a, uh, takes a, the form of a, a, a list of messages. So a list of messages is simply for, um, uh, sorry represent the conversation or the chat between you and the model. And uh, so you can see like in this function, which will create for me like. Uh, um, um, so um, the, the, the message or the input here, so the, I'm, I'm specifying the model I'm using, which in this case, I'm using the SKPT 3.5. Uh, 
Uh, so the input, this is what we care about. So the message is a list uh, of so it's a list of messages, and each message has to take like uh, it's a dictionary that take uh, has um, a key, which a role, and another key is a contact. And you have three possible roles: you have system, user, and assistant. So think about like when you're talking with with, with chat GPT, like um, just normal chat GPT here. Like, um, let me just open the window here. So, so whatever I'm writing here, this is me, the user. Like, uh, yes, whatever. Like, I'm just writing something. So, this would be the user message. And the answer here is the assistant. So, the, this is the assistant message. This is the user message. A system role. So, this is the extra one. This is what like you usually use only one system message and basically you're giving instruction for the assistant how to behave. So, um, uh, so for example, in this message, uh, like uh, I'm instructing the model to act like a poetic assistant. I want it to be writing poetry. Uh, it's skilled in explaining complex programming concepts with creative flair. So it's just like, um, I, um, this is a persona. So this is one of the strategy basically to clarify your task is giving your assistant a per, uh, uh, like a persona. So, and then after that, the user, when the user asks, compose a poem that explains the concept of recursion in programming, then uh, like running this, um, and like, um, so to get the, so the the output is actually like will look like uh, let me just look at the output that is before printing it so the whole completion should um so you'll get um it's going to be like uh so yeah it's it's a, it's a particular type that completion it has like uh um like yes id it will have like uh, so information about like how this uh, output was generated so for example here one um sorry if this is not clear we just uh, and this so one thing is that finish reason is stop so like uh, why did it is finish uh, like why did it like uh, like uh, that give you this out why did it stop at this uh, like output here it stopped because it stopped generating but other options is that it can be like run out of like uh, run out of uh, tokens so your context window was like um, if your for example if your input was very very long uh, you might not have uh, left uh, uh, characters or left uh, context window remaining for the model so like um might be the output will be too large and it's going to be to, to stop at some point because it doesn't have any capa more capacity to continue uh so like and then like it can be producing um like so this is the context this is like the actual answer so to get that like uh, from this completion i'm going to get the choices point like uh, the first uh, and then from that, I'm going to be getting the message from it. So, um, uh, so, um, okay. Uh, so here it's like, I can actually read this. Uh, yeah, so in the realm of code, uh, a concept profound, recursion dances, elegant and sound function called the self. Um, so it's actually a, like a, sounds like a poem, um, like we asked, uh, basically. So we can actually read the whole thing. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, so this, I'm, I'm just trying to, specify, to, to, to emphasize that how the input for the model looks like. So um, actually OpenAI used to have like a, a legacy uh, completion 
um, uh, models, not chat, but completion models, that you only had like the input didn't have these specified roles. Uh, it was just like you just put input and it was just going to complete. Um, so to continue the text after completed for you. Um, so it didn't have these specific roles, uh, but um, uh, and it's like significant uh, like the um, you can actually equate these two by like it's similar if you use only one one user um, message from of this type, not not a list. So to see like if you want to continue a conversation, just to continue to have an actual conversation, the actual model doesn't have any memory. So if you like send this prompt and then send another prompt, it's not going to remember that the first prompt you have sent. To actually send it, to actually like um, give it some, like uh, to pretend that it has a memory or what you're going to be doing is that you're going to supply your previous conversation as input. So like uh, to like to make this conversation like, um, ongoing i'm going to take this answer this output add it as like here i'll be adding another um uh, so another message so just give me so here i can be adding the role um and that role will be assistant this, this is like Am I correct? Um, and then like the content. Um, and whatever, like, uh, like the, the answer, like um, I can take the answer from before and provide it as content here and then provide like extra, like, um, like adding more and more messages. I'm going to get like an actual, like what resembles um, a conversation. Um, okay, so uh, so this is just about the input and the input format. Um, okay, going back to this, sorry, so this, we don't need this one. Um, so as you see like here, that's what, what is the meaning of system and user. So this would be a message from system with a system role. This will be like the user role. And like you can, uh, uh, this will tell the assistant to take a particular persona as we did just before telling the assistant to be a poet. Um, uh, and then, okay, so this is one tactic to clarify your, your, your uh, prompt. Another one is using delimiters. This is very important. Very important, especially in complex, uh, when you are using like complex prompts, like long prompts, uh, you can tell, specify for them for the for the model where to find particular parts of the of your input. For example, I had the, the question could be like uh, summarize uh, like the text delimited in by triple quotes. Um, the haiku like and you can use like a triple quotes. You can um, quotations. You can actually use like XML tags like this, like, uh, so you remember you specify in the system, um, in the system message, like what is the delimiters you are using. Uh, so um, you'll be provided with a pair of articles delimited with XML tags about the same topic. First, summarize the arguments for of each sub article and indicate which of them makes a better argument and explain why. So this is just an example. And then the user prompt has to take this format where like uh, two articles are delimited by this um, XML tags. You can also use subs uh, like um, sections, um, headers basically. Uh, so, um, for example, like, like, yeah, specify, like, for example, an like abstract and title like this in, like, um, telling, like, telling the, the, the model that you, they will, uh, the prompt will, will take a particular format, basically, like this. Um, okay. 
so uh, so this is another way to clarify um, um, the prompt uh, um, so another thing if it to do is to like divide the task in two steps into subtasks um so so just like uh, it's better this is like makes like the performance better for complicated um uh, task uh like um like here the example is like um um like uh, dividing like you want to do uh, a summarization and translation of of a text and so you are telling the model to follow these steps to first summarize and then translate and you specify the steps like into um another important thing very important is providing examples uh this is like a, what is called a few shot prompting um uh, like uh, we, without providing examples this is called zero shot but a few shot prompt is you can basically tell it to answer in a particular way by giving an example of what you want and to do that as we said is that you have to include uh, a user as an assistant part so like um besides the system uh a message you have to include a user and a system message and then like continue like this is the example right so this is like example of a user asking them all and getting an answer um, um okay and then like uh, when when it of course you're passing all of this as an input uh, when the model gives an answer is going to be like uh, we'll, we'll be taking this part um all of it as part of of um into consideration like this is all part of the one prompt okay um you can also specify the length of the of the output actually just like summarize in like you can specify it in words in number of words in number of paragraphs or number of sentences um and like uh I mean, not all of these structures are going to be followed exactly. You can even like see, like if you try and maybe use JTBT in your own experience, uh, you don't always get the perfect, um, uh, like the model to perfectly follow this, specifically when you are specifying a, a particular number of words. But like for like paragraphs and sentences, it's easier. Like it has a better um, adherence for that. Uh, you can also specify like a number of bullet points, all of that. You can just um, include all of that in your use in your like um, in your prompt. Uh, of course, it can be the user uh, in the user part or in the, um, the system part if you want it to apply this to the whole chat. If you want anyway. So um, so this is a fair strategy of being clearer. The second strategy we talked about because I'm going to be going quickly, sorry, because of the time. Um, so providing reference text is um, like uh, you can specify this is very, very, very important because you don't want it to, if you don't, you want it to give you accurate answers instead of just like, because if you, if you don't like specify this, the model is, by design or like uh, how it works is usually wh whenever you ask it the question it's usually just give you an answer it doesn't tell you like i don't know this is like oh, what happens um uh, so it can make if there is no answer actually it will make one it will make one up this is what we call hallucination if you don't want that you want actually accurate answers you have to specify this you can tell it answer my question from this specific source or answer uh if you don't find the answer within this specific source tell me i don't know or there is not enough information and this is very important or very good when you are designing a chatbot that um, maybe provide um, answers from a particular like if you design a chatbot for your like uh, website you want it to answer like a um, um just like answer questions from users uh, about your own website. You don't want it to make up stuff for you. 
So you want it to answer for your own documentation. Then you provide the documentation, tell it to answer for the documentation. Don't make up stuff. Um, so yeah, so this is how you how you do that basically. So like you, you just have to tell it to do that. Uh, like uh, search provided user provided articles to answer. And if you don't find the answer in the article, say, I don't know, or there is not enough information. And um, OK, so this is about uh, the text. Um, and also, of course, you can tell it to give you like the actual citation from the documentation. Um, so and this is like a good if you want to test evaluate it. So to provide you like the specific part where it got the answer um this is uh, this is good for for like um for evaluating uh its its um performance you can compare if it's getting the actual context co correctly um okay so this is like the second strategy about providing um like um, context of providing references the third strategy w was to divide the task into simpler subtasks uh, and we talked about like um just providing instructions follow um okay so basically you can tell it to uh for example here uh something that you can do is that like you can tell it to um in the system um the system message you can tell it to look at the user question and uh, classify the query from the user what what kind of uh, query it is and then depending on its classification you provide the categories before behind beforehand you provide the categories in the system so for example the example here is that you're providing a customer service basically chatbot is a customer service and you're providing it with categories specific categories for for user queries for example it's billing questions you have technical support questions like account management questions you specify them so this is the category you define it in the system message and then when the user asks a question like i need to get my internet working again so this is a technical trouble, uh, troubleshooting question the model should be able to um to classify that for you which which category of question it is you can do this like you can instruct it to do the classification first and then handle the query depending on how on like depending on its type in a particular way um i hope you're following i'm just i'm going super quickly right now sorry because like um uh, um there is not enough time is going to go uh, over like um over this to give you some time to ask, ask questions um so yeah so you can also of course have conversations like a, a chat which is going to be cons uh, con uh, con will consist of like several uh, iterations of uh, user assistant user assistant user assistant questions uh, sorry messages on the same prompt and it can get very long and as we mentioned before a model has a context window so it can take input of a particular size if you exceed that size um so you cannot exceed that size so to to if you want to handle a long conversation at the same time um while having this limitation you have to deal with you have to shorten you basically your prompt um and that would be like uh, there are a few a few ways to do this one of them is summarizing you can uh, okay the simplest thing to do is to drop the earlier questions like um if uh, the user is asking like ask 10 question and then there's uh, the 11th question the prompt is too long just drop the first question from your from from the chain this is a very simple way to do it as another way is to actually uh, summarize the old conversation and you can do this like um, like with every new uh, query um uh, so um like I do this like recursively in a way so 
this is something that we also made. So, so this is a, the third strategy. Uh, the fourth one is to give it um, a, a chain of thought. Um, so basically, this is a step, as I mentioned, the, the, for example, the example is like uh, if you have a mass, like a, it's a mass problem, you can tell it to like, um, like to how to think about it um in, in a way uh, uh so for example if you like uh, here's the example is like calculate the cost of uh, a solar power installation and then depending like you give it a long cost um, a solar panel cost by by square feet and then like uh, it has to like um calculate uh, uh uh okay like it, it has to calculate like uh, the the cost with uh, with the area and then like um, okay so you just like you can actually is give it like um a, a train of thought like it can follow steps to think about the problem or steps to follow to solve think about mass approach problem you follow specific steps to to solve it you can give it these steps so that it can go through them instead of just jumping into giving you an answer. Um, so the example here, that's, as I said, it's just like a, some kind of, a, um, yes, yeah, kind of a mass problem. Um, sorry, we can, like, um, we are not going to go into details about this, but uh, it's it, it, the, the goal or the, um, this is good, because as I said, um, instead of like, um, it, it can be that the steps itself um, can be useful uh, or like it to, to prevent it from jumping into giving you an answer that is not going to be correct. Another thing is that you can actually, um, uh, uh, like how the model will generally go about it doing or how to giving you an answer would be different from what you want so this is a way to actually structure um it's thinking in a way uh if we can say that um uh, so this is like uh this is a i don't know what i remember this is a force strategy i think um yeah another tactic is as tactic is to like uh, ask it to to check if it missed anything from the previous passes anyway so uh, we can read more about this on the guide actually and try to actually work out a few of these examples for you to answer understand it better sorry if um uh if if um i didn't go through this enough but uh, yeah so the uh, fifth and third uh, sixth strategy was to use external tools and um so this part in particular um so is like giving access to specific functions that like you, functions you actually wrote write yourself um and uh, the last part is this is just like um um if you give me a couple of minutes i will just just go through the function calling in, in a bit but uh, just to finish this guide is like talking here about the testing testing your strategies so whatever strategy you implement specifically if you are like um, if you're building like uh, you want to generate prompts or you want to write prompts to to achieve a particular um for a particular goal to 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 make sure that your strategies you implemented to improve your prompts are good are actually improving your your performance uh, you have to test them systematically. Um, this is uh, like uh, we're going to be like probably in the next uh, like uh, upcoming um, sorry upcoming challenges. We'll be going to this in more details and actually implementing this. I don't think this is part like of the task you have uh, have now, but you can look through it and uh, try to understand. Um, uh, it's, it's not it's not uh, that's the whole idea is that there are like uh, several ways to evaluate uh, prompts and you can see that it's not um when we talk about actually about generative models because 
they are generating new um, data, basically. Uh, evaluating them is not a simple, um, um, it's not a very, it's not a straightforward, uh, um, it's not super straightforward because like, it's not like when you do supervised learning, for example, and you have um, a classification and you can just test uh, the classification output from your model with uh, like with the levels that you already have, which is this, is this equal to this? Um, uh, this is very simple to measure, but here you have a language model. The output is language equating. Uh, so like if I give an example, um, the answer itself, like, um, okay, let's say like I ask the model uh, who is the president of the United States, I expecting to, it to give me like uh, Joe Biden, but then the answer could be as yeah, a president is Joe Biden, but it can be just Joe Biden or could be like a different uh, combination because it's words. Um, measuring the accuracy is not as straightforward as when you're dealing with other kind of, because it's generating language. Um, I, I hope you're getting the point. Uh, but uh, the point is, uh, is still it is possible to use um, semantic similarity. Uh, you can also, there are other ways of evaluating. Uh, um, uh, generative models include using actual like um, human, um, human efforts to, to evaluate it. But of course, that is not very scalable. Um, you can use like generative model to to evaluate generative model basically so you can see here i think an example of a prompt that will tell uh, you so basically you're using the the model itself to test um how good the, the answers were were you're getting so yeah so you can go through this and try to understand how it works it's going to be useful for you in the future so just uh, a final thing um so 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 sorry so very quickly i went through different strategies for for improving our prompt um one last part i wanted to uh, to go through is um like uh, using function calling um okay just to like this is example that is provided here uh, the idea is that like you can define your own function so this is just a code using OpenAI, but you define a function here yourself, right? And then uh, what we're going to be using is these tools, like this is like part of like uh, what OpenAI models actually take. Um, so this is one of the parameters you can take, and there you can define your function, the one that you're going to be passing, right? Uh, with its name and description and the parameters it takes, and um uh and then uh pass that to, to pass the tools here like so this is like my client chat completion create so the model and message is as before but what we have new is this uh, tools and then um uh, from the response i will get out of this i will get be getting also a tools call and um yeah so basically you can from the, the tools call you can get um uh, you can use it to actually run in your function you run your function okay the, the response you get out of the of the of the model uh so i'm sorry if this was very very quick but um uh any questions and i'm so sorry for going over time Yes, Hillary. Yes, my, my question is: what, what are the roles uh, I'm seeing system and you? And uh, if you're good, if you're to use like the where, where we write conversations in ChatGPT, how do you assign the roles? Um, so there are three roles: uh, you have system, user, and um, assistant. So uh, let me just open the maybe the playground um, here. So this is like um, OpenAI. 
platform will work like out. So, so you can see, so this is a playground. Uh, you can provide the system message here. So usually in a chat, you have one system message. Basically, this is where like you give the general instructions for your assistant to how it will behave. For example, here you say like you are a help or assistant, but you can say like, yeah, like you, like you are um, an expert um, data engineer. So like if I wanted to give like an answers that are going to be um, from this special specialization but then i can also like give it like um, um the input is going to be like delimited in a particular way you're going to be getting articles that are delimited by like these tags whatever i can specify this in the system and then uh, the user is uh, is the answer from um this is a question sorry the question from the user but another thing is that you can get is that you can have the assistant is the answer from the model. But if I want to give like a few shot uh, prompt, meaning I'm providing examples, I can actually add a user question, like an example question um, and an example answer. And then I can add another user question. And um, so, so these are the three roles and these are their meaning. Do you get that or like, is that clarifying? Yes. Yeah, so, so you know, normally in let's say if I'm asking ChatGPT a question, yeah, uh, I only have, have one place to write a message. Exactly. So, yes. Is that a user only? So yes. So when you write in ChatGPT, what you are what you are writing is the user. This is the user message. What ChatGPT spits out for you, this is an assistant message. Okay. Okay. What is missing is the system. Mm -hmm. Yes, because the chat DVT is just a general chat. The system message it's for it is just like the default one, which is you are a helpful assistant. This is a default. Um, but when you are using a, the API, you can be, or you're using the playground, you can be, you can change the behavior of your assistant instead of like having this general uh, chat dbt you're going to have a specialized thing that's why you are not you're not like one one reason of course you can connect it uh, you have the api and you can connect it to your code and all of that but another thing is that you can have a special uh, behavior so uh, when you specify the system when you add like examples and stuff all of that so uh so yes to reiterate again for that when you are acting with ChatGPT, what you write is a user a message what you get from ChatGPT back is an assistant message and the system message is the default which is a you are a helpful assistant but you can modify those for your prompt however you want is this clear now yes it's clear thank you okay so just a general point uh um, so I, I hope this is not going to confuse anyone. Well, you are using OpenAI, so this is what applies. Uh, but in the future, when you're going to be dealing with other generative models, you will learn that the input for um, for for models varies, so it doesn't have to be the same way. Uh, but generally, um, chat models have this kind of like uh, yeah, assistance um, user. Um, uh, or like um, kind of input or you can actually just add it in your on in your you can actually um how to say so yes because you are using open ai and you are using open ai um library you have this specific so you cannot write your input uh, in another way you have to use like these three roles and you have to use this particular format but this will differ for different other generative models okay so this, this is just like a, a disclaimer for for the future for now this is what you're dealing with other questions let me look if there are like other questions in the chat box Abdurrahman, go ahead uh, okay uh, for the part that the model uh, doesn't have a memory uh, can you yeah. give uh, us a quick explanation? 
yeah so when you pass all from your code uh, when i pass this uh message okay um this is passed as an input to the most to the model and i will get the answer from that model right if i want to ask to write a new one a new input here okay um so let's see it's completion two and this was completion one when when the when this is passed to the model the model will not have a memory from my first one it doesn't so if i really wanted to remember what i did before so if the model just handles the just the one prompt just one prompt the, it's, after it gives you an answer it forgets all about it it doesn't have a memory memory like included so if i wanted to remember the conversation i will have to pass so uh i will have to pass it like this um uh the the sorry the conversation from before i have to add it like say um yeah suppose here i have a new question sorry so this is let me just like I, um so this is the context and this is question one um so this is first question right okay right let's anything um okay and uh so this is my was my first um my first uh, prompt and i got some kind of answer so to remember this in my prompt what i will do is that i will copy this and of course you can do this in a modular way i will copy this and add it to or basically all i need is um so i will not repeat the system quest the system part right what I will add, I will add this completion one. So this message that I got from last time, I will add it as an answer. So I'm making a mistake here, but yeah, just so this is going to be right formatted correctly in the correct way. Uh, and then I'm going to add new message. So uh, I'm, I'm going to add another role and that is equal to user with a new content. So be and say this is going to be a second question. Like, I'm just uh, and of course I'm expecting an answer from the assistant um, of course so right, um, so I actually don't I don't know to pass this but okay so I actually made this before so okay so what you see what i what i did so to remember as i said when you pass this to the model it will give you an answer but it will forget about it so if i wanted to remember my conversation to have a conversation with it i have to add the answer from last uh, last part okay and i'm not added it adding it correctly here but let's let's say um, i did the actual just got the message itself i added it here so as you see i have instead of have only one um user message i have the user and assistant message which is the answer from the last time and then a new user message so and if the conversation continues i have i have to add all all of it in the in each prompt if i wanted to remember it so in this prompt it is remembering the conversation because i'm passing it actually back to it so it's it's not that it remembers I, it's like uh, I have to pass the whole history back to the model. And ChatGPT, I think, actually does this. Um, and, and once the conversation gets too long, you have, if you get like this, like you have asked many, many questions, you have to start dropping either the earlier questions completely from your what you're getting. So say you are taking the last 10 questions, for example, or 
you can use um, summarization to summarize the earlier conversation to like into uh, a short limited size and then like add your new user questions is this it does that answer question or like does this clarify <coughs> I don't know, maybe it was confusing. Yeah. Yeah, okay, great. So yeah, you have to remember this. Remember that the model doesn't have a memory. The model has a context size, a context window, a size of input that can pass. Depending on the model, it varies. But uh, whatever you want to, like the model to consider in for like, um, for the output, you have to pass it in the input in the one prompt so if you wanted to remember a history of conversation you have to pass the history of conversation in the prompt if you want to it to consider a particular reference or a particular context you have to pass that also in the prompt so all of that you have to consider uh, any more questions if there are no more, no more questions because we are already all way over time um go ahead please and start um like uh playing or like uh dealing with open ai and um 